Thank you, Mr. President. Well, I appreciate the spirit and the heartfelt comments made today on the Senate floor about this very important subject, and I would like to take the opportunity to provide a little rebuttal to a couple of the statements that were made here on the floor today, and one question, although asked in the rhetorical by my colleague from Yankton, I believe it does deserve a reply. Uh, the first one, my colleague from Sioux Falls asked about accounting principles, and I don't think it's any secret to anyone sitting here on the Senate floor if our federal government actually abided by something like generally accepted accounting principles that certainly a debt would have an asset alongside it. Unfortunately, we see anything but the willingness of our federal government to abide by anything that even closely resembles a general accepted accounting principle. In fact, it does quite the opposite, and it's written its own rules for how they deal with debt, how they deal with printing money, inflation is another word for it, and how they commit our children and our children's children to really what amounts to financial servitude. One of the things that struck me during this entire process over the last several weeks is I've got an overwhelming sense of fear from the people that are in our capital opposing SJR3. I've also received that in my in inbox on email. I'm sure you've received it all. I heard it mentioned on the here on the Senate floor today, either fear, allegories of fear, or synonyms for fear. I counted them up, but it's not worth going into how many times we heard that. Well, I will tell you that fear isn't what can sustain a republic. Courage can, and courage may. I could stand here behind this desk and give you a counterpoint for each of the arguments you've received in your email box, your inbox. I have facts and data to push back on every statement that's been made. I could talk about a runaway convention, delegates acting outside the scope of their duties. I could read, as my good friend from Rapid City did, a list of those that suppose, support and oppose the Article 5 Convention of States, and I could read those if you'd like to hear them again. I could stand here and read from Federalist 41 or 43 and claim that that supported the position I was taking, or I could read you the statements of Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia in their totality, and I could read you everything he said about the Convention of States instead of just a small snippet that would support the position to oppose. I will tell you that SJR 3, as it sits in front of you today, has something for everyone in the Senate to consider. For those of you that are here and exercise your angst with the federal government and attempt to assuage that angst with state-level measures that end up with results that emulate Don Quixote, I would tell you that supporting this resolution is an opportunity for you to send a message and be a part of addressing what so vexes you. If you've been a member of the House or the Senate and you've railed against Common Core and the Federal Department of Education, here is your opportunity to make a statement. A vote in favor transmits your support of restraint of the federal government with respect to states' rights regarding education. If you sit here today and you think the massive and bloated federal government and the regulatory environment and rules written by unelected and unaccountable bureaucrats have held back our businesses, weighing them down instead of fostering growth and competitiveness, that these same rules and regulations have held back our farms and ranches and caused our state to spend billions of dollars in compliance instead of on making South Dakota a better place for you and your family, this resolution is an opportunity to make sure Congress hears your concerns. If you think the federal government proves over and over again that there is no problem so bad that it cannot be made worse by federal interference, and that the Affordable Care Act is anything but, and it also serves as a prime example, successive and successful passage of this resolution first in the Senate and then in our House can certainly make a difference. I've heard people say that we should send different individuals to Congress and that that would be the solution that we're all looking for. Well, I was a part of that massive wave election in 2010. Many of you were elected for the first time as well. And we changed who went to represent us in the Congress. And there was no palpable change here in South Dakota. Then a few years later, we made some more changes and sent different senators. And still, there were no palpable changes. In fact, the federal deficit continued to increase, and our debt climbed from $10 trillion to over $20 trillion. And then in 2016, we had the ultimate change, a change in the executive. And although I remain hopeful and optimistic, 
And certainly if the reduction in regulatory burden is any indication of things to come, I think there may be hope from our executive. But I want you to consider that just in the last 10 weeks, our Congress has signed or has passed and our president has signed into law two pieces of legislation that have added nearly $2 trillion to our debt. And for the millennials that are here, for all the young pages, that's over $23,000 in increased debt that you owe in just the last 10 weeks. You ought to think about that. I will tell you if you favor federal spending that prioritizes cow gas over jet gas and leaves 60% of our military aircraft unable to protect and defend our country, you shouldn't support SGR 3. If you favor a massive bloated federal government that controls over 60% of what happens here in South, South Dakota through burdensome regulation and financial leverage, you shouldn't vote for this. If you believe the federal government and its intrusion into your personal liberty, freedom, and your bank account is the solution, then you should oppose SJR 3. However, if you believe the government is not the solution to our problem, but that government is the problem at the federal level, this is an opportunity to cast a vote and be a part of making a difference. 37 years ago, I remember clearly sitting in my living room watching a television that was about the size of a minivan with a dial on the front that changed channels. And I know prior pages have no idea what a TV like that looks like. It's not just a thin screen but it looks like something you could put tires on and drive out of your house. And I remember President Reagan saying, and I was captivated by it, and I'll quote him. He said, from time to time, we've been tempted to believe that society has become too complex to be managed by self-rule, that government by an elite group is superior to government for, by, and of the people. Those that don't remember history are doomed to repeat it. If you believe that the government that is best for the people is the government closest to the people, then your opportunity to weigh in here and send a message to Congress is to support SJR 3. Thank you, Mr. President. Sign the petition and get your friends and family to do the same. With your full address, your state legislators will know that you really are their constituents in their district. Our success depends on you. So we're inviting you to be part of history. Let's invoke the constitutional solution that's as big as the problem.